Fool's foot lands in water, well, a slippery spot outside the shower stall, and he has to steady himself by grabbing onto the rim of the wash basin nearby. He then experiences a strange occurrence of deja vu and has to shake his head to free his mind of the sensation. Exiting the bathroom, the lights fade there and come to life in the outer room of his quarters, a living area about the size of a standard hotel room. Full finishes towel drying himself and changes for bed. Feeling a mild headache coming on, Full dims the main room's lights while checking the lock on the door to his quarters. He then crosses to his bed and pulls back the neatly made covers, which reveals two fluffy white pillows, the father one cradling a small stuffed animal. Fall smiles. Hey, Teddy, Fall whispers, making himself comfortable. Another long day for us. You ready to get some sleep, buddy? The bear's silence is consent. Fall awakens, propped up in bed once more, his eyes flicking to Teddy before settling on his own drenched body, soaked through again. Damn, he thinks. A familiar current of deja vu washes over him, though it dissipates as quickly as it arrived. He lingers in the tangle of sheets, wrestling to grasp the remnants of his nightmare, an unsettling spectre of dreams half remembered. Nothing, he murmurs, glancing over at Teddy's undisturbed slumber. Wait, there is something, maybe a woman. Desperation creeps in as he searches his mind, yet the elusive details slip through his grasp like sand, and he finally lets them fade into the shadowy depths of his subconscious. With a heavy heart, he pulls himself from the bed. As he changes into dry night clothes, the flicker of sandalwood incense catches his eye. He lights it, and the warm, earthy scent fills the air, wrapping around him like a comforting embrace. He turns to face the full-length mirror, watching tendrils of smoke dance and spiral upwards, grounding him in the moment. Fall, he says aloud, the name heavy on his tongue. Fall, fall what? The echo of his voice hangs in the air, mingling with his frustration. He lets out a deep sigh, the sound reverberating in the quiet of the room, and walks toward the bathroom. As he moves, fragments of an old limerick spark in his mind, weaving their way through his uncertainty, beckoning him towards an unclear resolution. Chaos forms to shadows. Shadows take their place. The liquid they're absorbed in forms my placid face. Water into water. Chaos born again. Relieving all my tensions. As new ones just begin. Fool cannot place the poem or its poet, yet the words linger in his mind like a whispered secret, as if they emerged into existence only moments ago. He flushes the toilet and exits the bathroom, the scent of sandalwood enveloping him once more. Closing his eyes, he lets the familiar aroma wash over him, while the constant hum of the air circulation system drifts into his ears, mingling with the distant thrum of machinery deep within the upper rim. It's both comforting and alien, a reminder of his isolation. Turning back to the full-length mirror, he catches sight of his own reflection, a man adrift among remnants of forgotten thoughts. A glance at Teddy brings forth a fleeting sense of camaraderie, yet the silent room feels heavy with unshared burdens. I should sleep, he tells himself, as if the words could summon the elusive rest he craves. Back in bed, the sheets cool against his skin. He hums a lullaby he once cherished as a boy, a fragile thread of comfort woven into a tapestry of lost memories. The tune feels like a stray echo overlooked by the many madmen who have scraped the cake batter bowl of his skull, his mind, over the years, and reshaping the bowl itself his face, leaving him a stranger even to himself, as he sings softly, 
A bittersweet warmth fills the air, reminding him that even in the chaos, some remnants of beauty still endure. Paul's thoughts drift from the lullaby as an image of a woman, Ninenshu, bursts into his mind like a firework exploding on the 4th of July. For a fleeting moment, her presence fills him with warmth and longing, a vivid reminder of something beautiful yet out of reach. He tries to freeze her image in place to hold on to that spark, but like the dazzling colors of those very fireworks, it fades into a haze of smoke and shadows, leaving him grasping at emptiness. Damn it, Teddy, he mutters. A deep frustration lacing his voice, echoing through the stillness of the room. We deserve more. The weight of his words hangs heavy in the air, a poignant acknowledgement of dreams unfulfilled, and memories clouded by the relentless march of time. 